All right, with the feet together and the hands atop the head. Circles. If you did the Tai Chi class, you can go right into slightly larger circles. Your body feels good. If you need to, need to warm up again, take your time. Hitting each part of the foot as you roll. Two more. Good. Other direction. Again, if you're warming up tonight, take your time hitting each region of the foot, front, side, back, and other side. Once that roll feels good, start playing with that feeling of a rope around your belt line, drawing you in each direction. So you're initiating the movement from your hips. The upper body is swaying to counterbalance. Two more. Very nice. Stepping out, hands on the hips, drawing the belly to the back to keep the back straight. Movement starting from the hips and begin. One, two, three, four, five. For more of a challenge, bring the hands to the center of the chest. Seven, eight, nine, 10, more challenge still, hands behind the ears, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, two more, 19, and 20. Same feet position, hands on the hips, back straight forward, twisting and looking up, and one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, last one, ten. Narrowing the stance a smidgen, just beyond shoulder width, pushing into the ground with your back straight as we scoop and then raise an elbow drop. And one, two, Pushing the ground the whole way. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two more. Nine and ten. Good. Widening your stance again. Back straight, if you can manage it, it, back straight and also parallel with the ground. It's okay to have a slight bend in our knees as we slowly twist and reach. One, and back across. Two. Three. Four, feel that roll through your hips as you twist. Four, five, sorry. Six, seven, eight, two more, nine, and ten. Now, ten more, a little more quickly with a dip. So I swoop to reach, swoop, and one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Raising up. Feet a bit wider than shoulder width. Same hip movement as our very first exercise. Bring your body around your base. Make sure you're hitting each part of the foot. Make sure your knees aren't locking out. Once the movement feels smooth, you can add in the drop. Two 
Two more. Good. Back to a more vertical posture. Again, rolling around that base to start off, hitting each part of the foot. Making sure those knees are relaxed. And once you feel ready, you can add in that drop. Two more. The last one. Good. Bringing the feet together, the hands resting gently on the knees, rolling around your base. Again, we're hitting each part of the foot on each revolution. Other direction. Back to the middle, forward, open, and back. Back to the middle, back around and forward. Last one. Good, shake out the legs for a second. Everyone doing okay so far? Awesome. All right. Nice big step to the side and foot raise. Okay, we do 20 back and forth and begin. One. Halfway there. Last one. Good. Now we're gonna work on our leg lift to sweep. If you're having a hard time with this, you can start with a more narrow stance. If you're looking for more of a challenge, you can expand the stance a bit. As my arms travel from side to side, they're pulling the hip in. Everyone see that? It's very hard to feel this if my belly button isn't engaged. Okay, if my abs are relaxed, my butt can stick out, all this torque is in my low back, nothing's channeling down to my ankle. If my belly is drawn in line, I can feel this twist through my torso, hip, and into the top of my leg. I want that to radiate down my leg, pulling my heel. So as I draw all the way back, draws the heel up, and I can set the foot to the side. Other important factor, I don't want to lean to kick. I don't want to bob to kick. Whatever height I'm at, I want to stay here, centered over the ground, kick, and then right back, okay? Try four of these on your own, at your own pace. Remember, you're kicking with a straight leg. The base leg can be nice and bent. The kicking leg, you want to be reaching through your heels. Use the breath for the kick. A exhale as the leg raises. Good, remember it's a nice low kick. The idea here is we're taking out somebody's ankle and throwing them back as we do. So we don't need to kick high to get an ankle. Good, let's try five of these together. Find your stance. Find your stretch and E. R. Sun. Su. Last one. Wu. Changing sides. Again, for our first few, play with that stretch. Play with that umbilical draw. Try to feel that stretch radiating down your leg and find that lift from the belly. That belly pulls the back, guides the hip. Good. Do four or five on that side at your own pace. Good, you're going to take your time, feel that twist. The whole body rolls, and the last part of that roll is the pop. There you go, good. Stretch, 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 and then pop. Good, very nice. Good, April, you're coming a bit more over the leg than ideal, so as you twist through, keep that pressure into the ground, and then the leg catches you. If your leg didn't come back, you'd fall back. That's the idea, that's the balance point. Good. Good, Kara. Hey, Kara, as the leg comes forward, the hands go back. So they're twisting along the same axis. Hands moving one way, 
leg going the other. Good, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, take your time. Find the stretch before you kick. Feel that draw through your belly, through your chest. And then on the exhale, kick. All right, let's do five together. And E. R. Sun. S. O. Good, shaking it out. Let's do 10 squat kicks with straight leg raised. Remember, pushing out to the heel, pulling back with the toes, pushing into the ground with that rounded brace leg. And again, E. R. San. Si. Wu. Liu. Qi. Ba. Jiu. Shi. Good. Shaking that out. Very nice. Next up, it's a tricksy little one. It's based on that external rotating kick. So watch me first. We're going to kick around, behind. And as I push into the ground, I'm going to sink. If I'm new to this, I can just sink a little, okay? If I'm feeling more comfortable, I can drop all the way butt to ground. As I raise up from the head neck, the front leg kicks and comes behind, twist, and sink. Raising, kick, step behind. So we're gonna move you all through four of these in a nice high stance. We'll go from there. Remember, it's paramount importance. The belly's drawn to the back, so the hips don't rotate back and the pressure doesn't go to the knee. So again, taking that first leg, carrying it around and behind. As we sink, that back knee is right in the crook of the front knee. It can then pass that front knee, but the legs are still touching as I sink down. That takes pressure off the knees and puts it in the hips. As I raise up, the front leg kicks and I step behind. I make sure the knees are lined up. Can everyone see that? And from there, that back knee, see I can kind of find that space as I sink down, legs still touching, twisting as I raise up, kick to step. Good, set your sink up carefully. Make sure the belly's drawn, the knees are in a line. As you twist, raising, kick to step, and sink. Last one. Good, shake that out everyone, very nice, very nice. We're just gonna do a couple of those today, but we're gonna add those in, in place of our straight drop squat for the outside crescent, because it's more challenging and more fun. All right, everyone did okay so far? Awesome, let's do some stance and single. Yes, April. Oh, well, stance and single leg will solve this problem. We did a lot of hip circles in the last class, and those tend to start driving into my knees, but this should help. Yeah, we're not going to do anything rounding with the hips today in Bagua. Um, tai Chi covered that base as thoroughly as anyone could ever care to do. <laughs> and so for stance and single today, <laughs> we're going to do the first four of each side, okay? So it's more of that warm up, and then we're gonna isolate and really focus on the mechanics of the last two, which I think are structurally the most challenging, all right? So let's find a nice comfy spot. <clears throat> Sorry, this is going. Combination of smoky air and two young children. I'll be signing by the end of class. Okay. So, camera down just a little more. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna start with my right leg or all of your left sides as the pressing side. From there, the non-pressing side is gonna raise and the big toe pointing down is gonna rest right in the middle of that other foot. So you can all see, there's the foot right in the middle of my arch, the big toe gently touches. It's not pressing, just touching lightly. On the side of the extended leg, I'm gonna coil and reach up. And the idea here is that as I coil and reach with that left side arm, I'm creating a full body stretch, utilizing the coil of that reach. The palm is twisting the palm out. And I wanna feel that twist all the way through my back into that bracing foot. The other hand is also pivot, <clears throat> pivoting to balance out my spine. <clears throat> Both palms end up being away from the body as I hold. Good, everyone hold that for a moment. Very nice, equal twist in both hands and both arms. 
Feel you use that twist like you're wringing out a towel for your back. The back elongates as the hands reach. <clears throat> Good. When the stance gets boring, you can draw the hands in a little and re-engage that stretch, trying to re-establish that body feel through your back. Again, these postures are supposed to be eventually intensive, but they should never be dull. You should always be working on coordinating one region of the body to another. From here, the bent foot steps, then the straight foot steps. Both legs are straight. The high arm arcs and comes behind my back. The low arm arcs and reaches in front of my face. As I reach my hand, I can under my foot. And the hand that's going under the foot is palm towards the ground, dorsum of the hand towards the foot. The hand of my back is palm facing the ceiling, dorsum of the hand towards my back. As I press that top hand up and draw that bottom hand up, it helps me further feel my hips and stretch into my leg. Raising the chin slightly further focuses that stretch into my hamstring. If you can't get your hands into this yin yang shape, it's entirely appropriate to stack your hands fingertip to fingertip and relax down your shin as far as you can until one day you can make it underneath your foot. I promise with practice that day will come. From here, become more vertical. The weight rolls forward onto that front foot and lifting from the hip, not the knee. And again, to do this, the belly has to draw to the back. We raise that back leg, lifting from the hip. So you feel that stretch down the low back, deep in the belly, if we can, even in the psoas. Raising the knee as high as we can with the foot parallel with the ground as the arms unfold and hold. And as the arms unfold, we still have that knitting of the clavicles. The arms aren't stretched to the side. They follow that kind of natural rounding curvature of the chest. Every couple of breaths, raise that leg and press down on your rooting leg. So you can further feel those more deep postural muscles and keep holding. Making sure that you're stretching through your fingertips as you hold. So let the hands curl in. Make sure that each palm is stretching out. There you go, very nice. Brazen, Caro, nicely done. Caro has wrist weights, I'm jealous. Good, Caro, make sure the fingertips are stretching. Very nice, Galen. Good, April, and again, every couple of breaths, raise that knee up just a little bit higher because it will tend to lift down. From here, the foot of the raised leg comes over and covers the down knee as the arms fold and wrap. And they fold and wrap like this. It's like I'm holding a pane of glass, okay? But even so, I'm not compressing my armpits. My arms aren't locked in here. That same roundness that I established in my chest is still carrying through. You see how there's kind of an oblong shape to the arms, not a locked, fixed straight. So I use that oval to hold that space in front of my body at the same time engaging the paraspinal muscles so I can feel them wrapping around my core. Good, and hold. Excellent. Everyone has space in their low armpit. That's perfect. That low hand is gently reaching towards that raised foot. There you go. So the very slight engagement to those fingertips. And relax. Shake it out for a second. It's really easy to do just the first four. We're gonna do the other side and then the last two. Shake it out for a minute, get some water if you need to. Do you mean last four? No, we're gonna do the first four on both sides and then focus on the last two of each one. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, so we're gonna do flexion and extension through um, cold duck and floating iron plank. And the Tai Chiers had their knees beaten up for the last hour, so I don't want to do too much of the deep knee work as we get warmed up for Bagua. So we're going to skip um, five and six for tonight. All right, starting in about 30 seconds here.
So now switching feet towards all of your right side. That right side foot is pressing into the ground. The left sided foot raises with the toe right in the middle of that back foot. The hands drill opposite directions. So both palms are once again facing away from the body, using that drilling stretch to create length and extension in your spine. Whenever you feel like your back isn't engaged, you can draw those hands in a little and then stretch, wringing out your spine and creating a little bit more space for your vertebra as you lift and press. From here, the raised foot steps. The straight foot steps, both legs are now straight. The front foot is on the heel with the toes raised. The low hand arcs around and forward, coming underneath your foot. The other hand is on your back. The palms are facing towards the floor on the low hand and the ceiling on the high hand. As that top hand presses away from your low back, let that extension help open up your spine and draw you into your hip. If you want to increase the stretch even more, you can raise your chin a little. This will also help focus that drop directly into your hip and hamstring. From here, you raise. The weight rolls forward on that front foot, drawing the belly to the spine, raising that to the back hip as the back leg lifts up. The arms open. And again, if I want to focus more on those arms, I can draw them up and down ever so slightly so I can feel that side body engage. As my leg lifts downward, I can pull from my belly to raise the hip, drawing that foot up. And as one leg raises, I push down equally into that grounding foot. It's not just lifting off balancing, I'm lifting and pressing. There's always an opposing force giving balance and structure. Keep holding. Good, life through those fingertips. Very nice. Actively raising the knee. Good, and pushing into the ground on that rooting leg. Here, the foot of the raised leg points and comes over the knee. The arms wrap and I'm holding a pane of glass. Again, it's that oblong shape drawn inward. And as I draw in, I feel those paraspinal muscles engage, supporting that wrapping structure as I hold. Good, space in the armpits. Once again, that knee is always trying to lift up and the pressing foot is always trying to push down. The head and neck raise, the belly button draws the spine, all that good stuff is consistent. Good, and the low hand is gently reaching towards the low foot, towards the raised foot rather. Good. And relax. Shake that out for a moment. So we're gonna play with the two end movements of this form next. Um, for those who don't remember, they are that reaching forward press and the drawing back and press. And these two are tricksy. The mechanics behind them are tricksy. And the way that I got them down was by cycling through one shape into the next, back and forth several times, really feeling that rotation through the hips I pull back and forth. So if you watch me, as I lean forward, I'll face forward first. My hips are even. I'm not drawing up as I come through. I'm pushing into that brace leg. The brace leg is straight for this one, for a cold duck. As I press through, the fingertips are straight up. 
the toes are straight down, and my back, you can see, is flat like a table. There's never a point where a hip raises and then rolls into place. I want to make sure that I'm engaging to my belly so I can evenly press through that leg all the way through that descent. The other movement, um, floating arm plank, as I rise up, my hips are also even. The shoulder and the hip reach at the same point using its counterbalance. The weight of my palms draws back, opening my chest, but also see how my hips are even, right? I'm not listing one side or the other. I'm pressing into the ground. And for this one, the knee can have a little bend in it, which helps support the body in that backwards arc. From there, I draw from the stomach, pulling my weight up, find balance, pressing forward, find balance, pressing back. And that's what we're going to play with here is that forward back rock. Okay. Any questions before we begin? All right. We're going to start with forward because it's a little bit easier. So with me, starting on our first leg. So if you all your left leg, as we raise the arms up, we want to raise the leg with the arms. Like as a marionette string on our palms, pulling our hip as the hands raise up. We're lifting that hip, drawing the belly button to our back, stabilizing our pelvis as we do. Good. As we come forward, we're going to go slow, pushing into the ground. We don't want to jump over any tricky areas. We want to find them and build the support to stabilize even in uncomfortable spaces. Pressing into the ground as we reach evenly with the palms of the hands and the sole of the foot. Fingertips reaching up, toes reaching down. On our next inhale, use that inhale from the belly to pull your body up. Again, taking your time, not speeding over the tricky parts. Falling over is the best thing you can do in this. Finding that balance point, find that pressure to the ground, that belly draw, that head neck raise. And on the next exhalation, use that exhalation to create space and flexibility as you reach. Hanging out here for a couple cycles of breath, feeling how the weight of the palms and the shoulders is carrying you back as the weight of the foot is stabilizing, actively raising that raised leg. And on the next inhalation, using that inhalation to pull yourself from the middle back to vertical. Good. And if at any point you need to shake it out, you're welcome to do so. We're going to do two more of these forward and back. Okay? So one, two, three, four. From here, reaching forward as you pivot forward nice and slow on your exhalation. Take your time. Keep your hips square as you move. There you go. The toes are pointing down. The belly's engaged the whole time. Don't worry if you stumble and fall. Everyone does eventually with this. Stretch and hold. Feel that brace between your palms and the sole of your foot. Feel that stretch through your spine as you push out. Good. And the next inhalation from your belly, pulling yourself up to that middle around your belly button as the three extended limbs come back to that center. Hang out there for a moment, reestablish your balance, find that pressure into the ground, make sure your belly is engaged. And then as you draw back on the exhalation, opening the belly, opening the chest as you lean back, pushing evenly with both the arms and the leg. The elbows and the knees should extend in an even pace. Good. Use the weight of your hands and the weight of your shoulders to draw you back. Use the weight of that extended leg in front to balance off of. Excellent. On the next inhalation, drawing from your center back to standing. We're going to do one more of these on the side. And again, find that balance, find that pressure into the ground. The belly engages, the knee actively raises, which helps to better connect into your psoas. And as I lean forward, even extension of the elbows and knees, even reach of the palms and feet, the shoulders and the hips roll together. Playing with those correspondences of wrists to ankles, elbows to knees, and shoulders to hips. Stretching out, find that pressure between the palms and the sole of the foot. Uh, next inhalation, pulling yourself from the belly. Slow, hips even the whole way. Back up. 
Again, the knee raises because of that belly engagement. The foot presses, carrying all the way evenly into the ground. As we draw back on the next exhalation, expanding from the middle, the elbows and knees open together. The hands and foot reach together. Feel that cross body balance support you in what's truly an awkward position. And from the belly on the next inhalation, drawing up. Find your standing posture first, find your balance first. And once you have that balance, let everything settle calmly. And here, take a moment to walk around and shake it out. Very nice. Any questions before you go on to the other side? This is actually the first part of this form I was taught. Um, Nee Shurfu, I think, was still trying to figure out if I was going to quit and had me do way too many of these. And as you take a few steps, just feel how that leg responds to weight, to, to bearing weight now that is used to carrying all of you through that flexion and extension. It's going to be a very different feeling. Okay. We're all back in screen. We will do the other side, the right side. Sweet. And there's Caro. Perfect. Man, Caro, I am so impressed by those weights. That is, that is tough. That is very tough. So on the inhalation, drawing from the belly, pulling the hip, pressing into the ground with your right leg as the hands raise up. Good. Take a second to find your balance before we begin. Make sure that leg is lifting not from your knee, but from those deeper postural muscles. The umbilicus is drawn to the spine. as a slight curvature or concavity in the chest, pushing into the ground. Good. And on that next exhalation is the first one, so go extra slow. Take your time. Feel out the space of this movement. Make sure your hips have enough time to roll through each degree of flexion as you draw forward, pressing out evenly with the elbows and knees, and then ultimately evenly with the palms and sole of the foot. Find that through body stretch from hands to heel. Find space in the stretch, space in the spine. And on the next inhalation, drawing from the middle, Pulling your body up, but take your time. Remember, it's the first one through. This is our warm up. It's going to be the most exciting. Raising the leg from the stomach as we do. Good. The brace leg is actively pressing, the raised leg is actively raising. Find your balance. And on the next exhalation, the belly opens, the chest and back open, and the elbows and knees extend together. From there, the hands sink as the foot raises. Find that balance in your hips. Find that opening of your low back. And then from the belly, we inhale, and that inhalation gives us structure as we pull ourselves back to standing, using the breath to initiate our movements. Good, find your balance, find that knee raise. And the next exhalation, pressing and reaching forward, paying attention to the extension of the elbows and knees, trying to time those out so those joint structures move together. Good, keep that belly draw to your spine so your hips open nice and square. There you go, fingertips pointing up, toes pointing straight down. Back flat like a table. Good. Pressing, and the next inhalation, drawing from your belly as you slowly roll yourself back up to standing. Very nice. 
Find your balance, find your posture. And as you draw back, feel the belly open as you exhale, pushing out with the knee and elbows. Good. Responding to the weight of your hands, they draw you further back. It's okay for your base leg to be bent on this one. It helps you better open up your back and find space. Good, raising the foot that's off the ground to counterbalance. Excellent. And on your next inhalation, drawing back to vertical. One more cycle of these and we're done. You're all doing great. Find that balance, find that actively raising leg. Belly draws in. As we exhale, use the movement of that exhalation through your body, pushing out with your breath. In my case, right in your bookcase. Oh, that move. Find that balance. Using the inhalation in your belly, like almost like the breath is controlling your joints, lifting you with your breath, stabilizing as the inhalation fills and supports. Inhalation gives structure, exhalation gives space. Find that lift and press on the next exhalation. The elbows and knees extend together. The base leg is bent. The belly opens to the chest. The chest opens to the shoulders. The stretch of the palms gives space, supported by that lift of that left ankle. And the next inhalation, pulling back to standing. Find your balance first and intentionally set down. Whew. Nice job, everybody. Any questions so far? Take a few minutes or should a few, a few seconds, step around, get a sip of water. We'll continue in just a moment here. So to finish up, we're gonna do about 10 minutes of stepping and then five minutes of Qigong posture from our Ding Shri Batsang, our fixed aid form, okay? For our stepping today, we're gonna to mix it up a little bit. We've done mostly Liang Bagua style stepping in the past. Today, we're gonna to go back and touch on some basic Chung stepping patterns. Um, for those who don't know, Chung and Liang are two of the major families of Bagua. Um, they come from the exact same place. Chung Tinghua and Yin Fu, had, or sorry, Liang Jin Fu had the same master. But beyond that, they've diverged pretty heavily. And so whereas in Liang style stepping, we're nice and relaxed, right? The big toe lifts, the heels down, we pull the feet together and step through, focusing on solidity of movement. In Chung style stepping, everything is, is predicated more on a solid and a consistent structure. And so in Chung basic stepping, as I press down, I pull the weight forward, but my focus is to feel that stretch in my hip. So as I do, the heel pulls up. And then from there, the knees touch as the foot scoops through. Grab, pull. There's no move in my belly, so the heel peels like Velcro off the ground. The knees touch and step through. Facing forward, as you can see from a different angle. My foot's here. My belly's engaged as I pull the weight forward. The heel peels. The knee touches and I scoop, okay? Pull, peel, 
and scoop. And the reason why this has to happen is because in order to take a step, some joint has to move, right? In the Leong system, they allow for a little bit of flexion and extension in the back, and that gives space to the heel to stay down every step. Because the chungs have a very stable base, there's none of that room, and so the heel has to give to make room to come through. Does that make sense in theory? Yeah? Cool. So we're going to begin in a straight line. I'm going to turn the camera down so it's a little easier to see. And I'll begin by walking towards all of you. The first thing I'm going to do is roll my hands up and press down, relaxed to the side. Like I'm holding two balloons of air, just very gently um, pushing them into water. Okay, so it's an active press, but it's not a straight arm rigid press. From here, the front foot's going to step through just a little. I draw the belly button to my spine, pulling the weight into that front foot, the back heel peels. From here, the knees pull together, touching, and the raised foot scoops under a pillow. Pulling, I'm going to more easily, pulling forward, I peel that back foot and scoop. Grab with the toes, pull, peel that back foot, and scoop. Okay? Again, so you'll see, grab, pull, peel, and scoop. Notice how my tailbone isn't flexing, isn't flexing or standing at all. My torso is solid as I peel to step, pull, peel, to step. The front foot is still pulling me forward with that very light and consistent toe grab. We're going to do a classic bit of chung leg strength training for the next four minutes and then some qigong work after. So watching me first. And Master Ni would have us do this for, what is it Derek, like an hour a day in Beijing? Every day? Which part? The walking? At least an hour longer for yeah. walking usually. Usually it was two hours of walking, one hour of the leg burning walking. And he was in a mood. And so the way this goes, which is hilarious and awesome, is that you maintain that belly pull, the back is straight, and I sink into that back leg without that front foot quite touching the ground. And I hang out here until the shaking of my leg becomes severe enough that I can't smoothly stabilize, and then I change legs. Okay? okay. To be fair, I count. I counted this in the walking count. Okay, cool. So we're not going to be talking about you about tonight. Um, it's not where you do one minute per leg and two sets each side is kind of a warm up. We'll delve into it more in the next class. All right. So starting, we got our timer going. I'll face all these. It's easier to see. My belly's drawn in. My back is flat. As I step through, there's that hand roll to press, and the raised foot is an inch or slightly less above the ground, just a couple centimeters. And as I hold, I want to make sure that I'm not leaning back. I'm pressing into the ground, belly drawn to the spine. All this weight is right there in my quads. I'm sure my quads are feeling every moment of this as I hold. And if they're not, I can push into the ground and sink a little deeper. Sooner or later, the quads will speak. From here, grabbing with the front foot, pulling the weight, keeping that belly stable, which is tough in these transitions when your legs are tired. Peel the heel, scoop through, make sure your back is straight, make sure you're actively grabbing the ground and pushing into it. The raised foot, again, is barely off the ground, but definitely not touching. And you can kind of raise and lower your hips until you find a spot where the quads are talking to you.
Grabbing the ground with the raised foot. Maintain that belly connection as you pull, peel the heel, and step through. One more of these on each side. Again, making sure that back is straight, that belly is engaged. Play with your height off the ground as we stabilize. Grabbing the ground with that root leg. Last transition, grab, pull, peel that back heel, step through, make sure your belly is engaged, make sure your hips are square, as so you sink down into your quads and hold. Always put that base leg, finding the most exciting place to hang out. Grabbing the ground, pulling the feet together, and relax. And shake it out. As super classic old school Chung Bagua training, um, it will yield very, very beefy legs if you do it regularly. It's also not the most fun thing, so if you don't do it regularly, I understand, but it is a nice way of building awesome leg support. Any questions so far? Let's do a little of our Qigong then, and we'll close out. And so watching me, make sure my legs and frame a little bit. So if the feet open to about shoulder width, I inhale as I raise, and I sink as I press. I inhale as the wrists turn in, and I sink as I exhale, and the hands reach out. Inhale, arms arc up, Exhale, sink, displaying hands that press. Inhale, hands turn in. Exhale, sitting and shouldering them out. Good. Breathing in. Breathing out. Use the breath to find space and stretch. Use the inhale to find structure and lift. Use the exhale to find elasticity. Good. My back is relaxed, spine stretching down as I reach, opening, pushing into the ground. As the arms open, I sit back into that big high stool, big high chair. Inhale, raise up, opening from the chest as I exhale, reach. Keep playing with that.
Hey, Derek, as you raise up, keep that roundness of the shoulders. Try not to have that little bit of bump in there. Shoulders are curl and stay relaxed as you stretch. That way it's easier to kind of link into your side body and stretch it out. Very nice, Derek. You feel that difference? Good, good. Same for you, Galen. Very nice. As you lift up, I round the shoulders. I don't elevate them. And then stretch out of that roundness. As I draw down, the shoulders don't raise up as I come up. I'm arcing up and over, feeling that stretch in my paraspinal muscles as the hands splay. So I'm trying to carry as much of my side body and back sensation with these movements as possible. I want to make sure I'm not just moving with my shoulders, but I'm trying to actively link into my ribs, lats, and paraspinal muscles. The fingertips are stretching in each, in the end of each position. The fingertips are stretching towards each other. The fingertips stretch out. Good, and each, on each pass, try to feel more and more of those structures in your torso linking in and supporting you and being carried into the postures. Good, play with that roundness in your chest. As we press down, this is a great big sphere, right? It's not just the ball, the, the circle of my hands. There's a concavity of the chest, this whole area is it's round in three dimensions. As I draw up, I'm now holding that ball between my chest and on my hands. It's not a much bigger ball, but I'm still taking the shape of a very, very oversized beach ball. As I press down, slightly less oversized beach ball, but a beach ball nonetheless. Good. When your body has sharp angles, those are weaknesses where force can lodge if you're pressed. If your body is always on an arc, you don't have those corners that force to lodge into, and it's easier for you to, easier for you to carry either impacts or release power in a smooth line. And so whenever you're making a gong fu qi gong shape or you know, a basic posture, always look for the curves. The curves will connect it from body region to body region. Good, and one more of these in each direction, and we'll call it a night. Excellent. And then scoop to lift. Pick up the lift, drawing up and over. It's relaxing down. And for those of you who are newer, these two positions are actually the most fundamental hand palm positions to play with as you practice your stepping. And so whether it's chung or leong footwork, this is a great place to spend a few minutes as is this. And those two postures make up the first quarter of our very first Bagua form. All right? Any questions so far? <laughs>